So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a reusable header in the new responsive engine so that you can end up having something that is going to work just like this, where when you expand and collapse, you'll be able to see the different elements as you would want to. Now, this is not about how to make something look pretty. I am not that type of designer. I am able to build something out and show you the basics of how to work within the new responsive engine. So that is going to be the focus here. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new reusable element. I'm going to label this what I might label it for myself to understand what it is. So let's just go ahead here and I'm going to label it as such and let's create that. Now, once I have that set up, I need to get my header uh, put together in terms of being ready to use the new responsive engine. So let's go ahead and upgrade that to the new responsive engine. Okay, it's taking a while to load up. And now let's go ahead and get this set up to be ready for our layout. The layout that we're gonna be choosing here is gonna be row. I'm going to set everything up uh, as such here, the space around, and now I'm going to make it so that I have the width, I'm going to set it at 1200, and my minimum height, I'm going to set it at 60. My maximum height is also going to be set to 60, and that is how I'm going to let this go. The max width will allow it to spread all the way out. I'm going to put an appearance on here to give it some color so that you can actually see what's happening there. And if I go into the responsive engine, you can see right now that this is going to stretch and fit all the way. And the height is not being uh, like flexible at all for me. I don't want it to flex beyond 60. It's my header. It should stay that same height. Now inside of here, I'm going to drop a group. So I'm just going to quick type group. I'm just going to click right in and get that there. I'm going to set this one up to also be the row. I'm going to leave it as container alignment right there for now. I'm going to label this off as group container. And now that I have this set up, I'm going to get the fixed width off of it and allow it to spread as much as it will. I, and I'm going to put the minimum height at 60 and I'm going to make that a fixed height because I also do not want that height to be stretching out at all. So now that I got that set up, let's get some elements in there. First one that I want to put in is going to be an image element. This is going to be for my left side for my rectangular logo. I'm going to label it as such. And now I'm going to put in a dynamic image. I already have the dynamic image set up, so I'm just going to reference the actual uh, URL there. All right, so I'm just going to put right into my dynamic image the URL. So let's have that going. Now you can see here it looks pretty messed up, so I'm going to get into my layout. I'm going to adjust things. I don't want it to be any more than 240, and I don't want the height to be spread out. I want the height to be fixed at 60. So now you can see it looks good. Other thing that I need to do is collapse when hidden. Now this is a bit different than what the previous engine allowed for, which was just allowing you to collapse your height when hidden. And instead here, this is also what you need to do when you're going to end up using your conditionals to be able to hide it at different page widths so that you can also collapse the elements with itself. Now as I'm looking at this, this looks like it's a bit more spread out. I guess my original sizing of that uh, logo is a bit different, so I'm going to go ahead and put that at 210. And so now it looks a little bit more like it should be based off of the way my logo was originally designed. Now just like in the previous engine, you want to make sure that you're optimizing things. So any sort of element that you're not going to have visible all the time, and instead you actually are going to set up conditionals to tell it when it should and should not be shown, you want to uncheck this element is visible on page load. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that unchecked. So to be able to keep track of what's going on in here, I'm going to open up my elements tree. I can open up group container. I can see that group rectangle is there. I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to copy with my keyboard, control C and then control V to get that paste in there. And now I've got the rectangle logo. Now because of its settings about element is visible on page load um, and collapsing the height, you didn't see it when it first got uh, pasted in there. So you had to actually click on it to be able to visualize it. So right now I'm going to rename this. I'm going to say that it is going to be my square logo. I'm going to readjust the width on it and make it 60. And then I'm going to end up putting into the appearance tab a different URL for a different logo. 
And so now I've got that. I'm going to go ahead and paste that logo in there. All right, so now I've got my square and my rectangular logo. So those things are looking good. So now what I need to do is I need to set up for my right hand side and I'm going to end up adding a group into here. I'm going to just drop the group right in there and I'm going to label this group group right. I'm going to get into my layout and adjust the settings here with the height and such. I'm going to put the height at 60 because that's what I want it to be. Now I need to set up the container layout. Remember, the container layout that you choose on an element is dictating how the child elements of it will be uh, set up and laid out. This will also be a row. I'm going to have them laid out so that they are right aligned because this is going to be my right side. So now I'm going to go ahead and put into that a uh, set of elements. The first element that I want to put in is going to be my Google material icon. I'm just going to click right in there and get that in. Now I'm going to quick type in for menu and I've got my menu element there. I'm going to do my layout on this and I'm going to make sure that it is 60 and it is 60. And at this point right now, that should be good to go, except I am going to check this box, make this element fixed width. I will come back to this in a little bit as to why this is important. But right now I'm just going to go ahead and check that box. So next thing that I need to do in here is I need to put inside of that group the buttons. So I'm going to just quit type select button. I'm going to just click it right into there. And right now I'm going to go ahead and label this one as login. And let's go ahead and get my style. I want to just do the outline button on the login. And I need to adjust for my layout. And so right here, I don't want it to be on the right side. I want it to be in front of so I'm going to click on previous and I'm going to switch the position with it and that material icon. I'm also going to come into here and set off the height of it. I don't actually want it to be 60 because that's going to just be too big of a button. I want this button to be 40 and my width of it is too much at this point. So I'm going to bring that down to around 100 and see how that looks. And at this point too, I'm going to make it a fixed height. And what I want is to actually have this centered. So I'm going to click onto my centered vertical alignment to get that right into the middle so it is vertically aligned. I need to add some space between it and the icon for the menu. So I'm going to add a right margin of 20 pixels. And so now I've got that space there. I'm going to go ahead and control and paste. And so now I've got the other button that I want in there. And at this point, it's not really clear which one was a copy, uh, so not really sure why Bubble's not maintaining that consistency from before where they would label things as a copy of another. But either way, I'm not really focused on the bugs and all the other things that are inside of this new engine. I'm focused on understanding how it works. So right now, I'm just going to relabel this one as sign up. And I'm going to get my appearance to be my primary button. And I'm going to change the wording on it to be sign up. And at this point, it looks like it's all set up to be exactly the same as that login button, which is good. It's got its 20 pixel margin on the right hand side, so it's 20 pixels away. So at this point, everything is set up except for my right group. I need to make it so that my right group will not be fixed with and it will instead actually expand out to fill up the entire space that was there while maintaining everything on the right hand side. You might want to adjust your min width in some way. Uh, for me right now, I'm just going to go ahead and play around with this at zero. I am going to make sure that this is a fixed height as well. I don't want it to be expanding anything beyond just that 60 on the height. So let's check out the responsiveness on this. All right, so as we come in, we can see that we're not actually able to see the logos. Those logos are hidden on page load, and so by default when you come inside of here, you're not going to see them. And I do need to see them because I do need to set up conditionals to tell them when they should be hiding. So right now I'm going to just play around with this, and I'm going to adjust the height, or rather the width of this page, and see where the breaks need to occur. And so right now when I get up to here, I can see my break, and my page is about 575. I'm going to go ahead and just bring this out a little bit further and say it's 580. That's where I'm going to want things to break off. And so what I'm going to end up doing is clicking into the group rectangle logo, adding a conditional onto it, and I'm going to define a condition. And I'm just going to type in width for the current page width. 
and I want it to be when the width is greater than or equal to 580 that this element is going to be visible. So I'm going to check that box. I'm just going to go ahead and copy the condition and then paste that condition. I'm going to reverse my uh, command there or my comparison and I'm going to uncheck is visible. So now I'm going to right click into here and I'm going to copy conditional formatting. I'm going to click onto my logo square. I'm going to paste the conditional formatting and I'm just going to go ahead and reverse these here so that they are going to be visible and not visible at different times. So as soon as I bring that down, you can see how that works. And now I am all set up with a responsive reusable header. And we can go ahead and put this onto a page. Now you can see this gets down to about 360 and it's okay. Now if I was going to be putting this into an app of mine, I would spend obviously more time to kind of configure things a little bit differently. But for the purposes of this tutorial, this is where we're going to stop in terms of setting up that design. I want to look at what it is on a page though. All right, so I got a new page in my app created. I've already upgraded it to the new responsive engine. I'm going to click into the page itself. I'm going to look at the layout here. I'm going to get rid of fixed. It doesn't matter at this point which one I'm choosing. I'm just getting rid of that fix so that I'd be able to have the ability to set up my uh, width and things to be more dynamic. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that at 1200 for right now. And on this, I'm going to end up putting in a floating group because that's going to be what I use to actually have my reusable header inside of it. So my width on this uh, is not going to be fixed width, so I need to get rid of the container layout of fixed. I'm going to make this align to parent because that's going to be the easiest to work with just for the purposes of putting the one element, the reusable, directly into the center of it. I'm going to get rid of the width of 400, put that at 1200 to match my page and my reusable. I'm going to uncheck the fixed width so that it will stretch out. I'm going to get rid of min width now to 12 to 0 so that it will go all the way down. I'm going to put the height to 60. And I'm going to make that height fixed width. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and drop into here my reusable element. Uh, so this one is the header, and I believe I called that new test. So let's go ahead and just drop that in there. And it takes a little bit longer than in the old engine for things to actually render onto the page. This is uh, pretty poor for performance there, but either way, it is what it is. So here, I'm going to choose the non ant just to be centered. Another thing about poor performance with this new engine, you're not seeing all of those elements that are there, meaning you're not seeing the logos. So when we come into the responsive tab, even though those logos should be visible right now based off of the settings we put into it, we still can't see them when previewing on the page. So kind of something Bubble should maybe fix and get that ready for us. I'm going to go ahead and just preview this page though to see how it looks. So as we're getting this loaded up, we can see now I've actually have that in there. I'm going to get rid of the debug mode from my URL so that I can get rid of the debugger on the bottom and just see things a little bit more clearly. All right, so you've got your company name all the way there with the square. So if I'm going to end up uh, collapsing the width, so to collapse the width, I'm just going to grab my browser's uh, window and start collapsing it down. And you can see as we bring this all the way down, we have the sort of behavior we want. Okay. Now, something that I had alluded to earlier, I'm going to show you here, is that if I had this uh, icon not fixed width, when I uncheck the fixed width, and we come into the responsive tab here, if Bubble's going to let me get into the responsive tab. I, so when I get into the responsive tab, you can see everything's fine. Everything's working as it was before inside the responsive tab. If we go into the page where that's on and we're in the responsive tab, we can again make sure that everything's working fine and it looks good. And then when we preview this page, let's go ahead and refresh this page. I, you're going to see something that's very jarring and unexpected. It doesn't look anything like it does inside of the responsive tab. So this is a bug within the new system uh, that makes it so that the way the responsive engine is rendering things inside of your editor when you're checking things out inside of your responsive tab, it's not rendering the same way that it will actually render on the page. Uh, so Bubble needs to fix that out 
But once they get all the bugs out, then that probably should not be there anymore. And you should be able to actually see what it would really look like inside of the responsive engine, which is what we're seeing here in the preview of the page. This is what it really looks like. So we should be seeing that same exact thing inside of the responsive. And at least we should be seeing it in the responsive here. So the reason why that's happening is the, be the behavior of this new engine if this will let me open it, uh, is that when you are allowing something to be not fixed with, its intention is to actually expand to fill up as much of its container as it possibly can. So that's why this sign up and login get all the way pushed to the left and that this icon here is just kind of like centered and it's taking up all the space because it's stretching its width. So let's put that back to fixed width and let's refresh this page again and we'll see it as it should be and that will be making sure that everything is working again and here we go so that is how you can set up a reusable header in the new responsive engine thanks for watching the video hope that you found this helpful if you'd like to be able to get editor access please make sure that you check out the site nocodetrainer.com the link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.